hey, welcome to part 10 of the Tenable Threat and Vulnerability Management uh, series. And so you're going to be able to walk along with me also on this one. So, but before we get started, just want to thank Salvatar. Salvatar is the company I work for. And I want to thank them because they are providing us with this tenable tenant. So thank you, Salvatar, for doing that, which allows us to be able to learn threat and vulnerability management. You're literally getting a chance to see the same things that I do on the job during this series as a result of that. So do me a favor, go to Salvatar.ai, sign up for like a free, uh, free trial, right? Basically, and actually there's a free service completely where you get an external vulnerability scan for your website and some other services just for logging in and checking out the platform. So go check it out. If you have a business, you have a personal, even your, you know, your home, your personal website, you can do that too. So check it out, cybertar.ai. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the series. Okay. So what I have here, I'm going to zoom out for a second. For this one, we're going to be working with the vulnerability 6.0.13. So I'm going to have a link directly to go and download this so that you can install this on your machine so that you can walk through remediating the vulnerability. I want you to have actual seat time and experience with vulnerability remediation. So we're gonna go here, <coughs> and forgive me, I'm gonna be coughing a little bit, still got the effects of COVID there. So I wanna go and click on the 86 here. And this will give me a list of all the vulnerabilities. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to assets and then I'm gonna look at particularly TI desktop four. This is the machine that we've been working on. So I remediated the vulnerabilities on or the critical vulnerability, so no criticals left on it. But once again, the job is not over. You still have to take care of the high severity vulnerabilities. And so what I'm gonna do is it's gonna show asset information. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and click on the open and find these. And so I'm gonna see the vulnerabilities and lo and behold, it looks like the next prevalent, and I can actually filter this by plugin. See if I see, so we have basically 11 different plugins and stuff like that. Or I could just do filter by none at this point. But you can see ASP.NET is the majority of the vulnerabilities on the machine. We're going to deal with Zoom later. But it looks like if we get rid of ASP.NET, we're going to get a lot of vulnerabilities that are going to go away. Let's zoom in just a little bit for y'all. All right, so let's go ahead and click on this. And remember, I always stress that plug-in output. Plug-in output is very important, okay? So let's click on that. And so you can see where it's C code and program files, .NET shared, Microsoft, F6013. So that being the case, what I want to do first of all is I want to use some PowerShell commands to query the machine. Now we learned something in the previous tutorial. So if you haven't watched the series, you need to be watching the series because it builds on the previous part, which is we learned, <coughs> excuse me, in the registry where those keys are, the registry keys are that you can do the uninstall for it. Okay, so typically I'm going to show you this, all right? So let's see if I can drag this down so you can see this. So if you notice, um, there we go. HC local machine software, while 6432 node, Microsoft Windows current version run. This is a very powerful thing to know because what I realized with the .NET cores is they follow a pattern. Now I, I got two queries I'm gonna run in just a second. And we're gonna look in also HK local machine software, Microsoft, not the while 6432. And we're gonna check both locations. So let's go ahead, because what we wanna do is I want to query because this, this version of .NET Core, by the way, they install, but they don't upgrade. .NET Core installs on top of each other. So if you have 6013, 6013, every time you install a new version, it's just gonna install a new version. It's not gonna upgrade the existing version, and that's for a good reason, because programs require specific versions sometimes. So that's not how it works, okay? So that being the case, I'm gonna go ahead and let's launch PowerShell. So I'm, so I'm going to, to zoom out here, I'm going to click on my Windows button and I'm just going to type, well, PowerShell should already be there, but we'll just type power. And that brings it up, right? And I can run as administrator once again, or click right click and run as administrator. You have to basically or do the Windows prompt to approve that you're going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in now, okay? So what I'm looking for is with this one, I need to find out. <coughs> Where this, like the, I'm gonna find the register key. I'm looking in the uninstall folders, right? And there are two primary locations. So make sure you note these going forward. This can be very helpful and feature vulnerability remediation and other TIT tasks, right? But let me get you familiar with the command. I'm doing what's called a reg query. If you don't know what the registry is, do some time researching it. You need to know what the registry is. So reg, and I'm querying the registry. And the path is gonna be HC local machine, software, Microsoft Windows, current version one, slash F, space four slash f for find 
And what I'm trying to find, you put that in double quotes and then forward slash S, which means check all the sub registry keys, means search recursively. Recursively, you'll see used in cybersecurity and IT a lot, which means basically search this folder, search all the subfolder, search this whatever, search all the sub items of whatever you're searching. That's what recursive does. So when I click here, it came back. All right, so it's display version install source okay and see this is helpful this unique identifier right here i can use to search the registry to find additional information related to dotnet core 6013 and then display name okay all right so that's helpful but it didn't give me what i'm looking for which is the uninstall string right i want that that nice beautiful uninstall string and when i look in the sys wild folder what i do get is like oh like i get some really good stuff here uh, what did we have here one of them let's see that's the slash modify so that's to modify it that's the command line the quiet uninstall stream right here sql and program files there we go all the path goes to the executable slash uninstall slash quiet it's like oh cool so this is how i get rid of so i'm going to take this i'm going to copy this uninstall stream right here and this is the one that uninstalls, but this is the one that does graphical right here. Notice it doesn't have the slash quiet, which means run this silently, okay? So I'm gonna copy this over to my notepad. Excuse me, gotta call for a second. Okay, now that I've got this co copy to notepad, I'm gonna format this in PowerShell. Oh, I'm doing overwrite, okay? So start tack. Move this over so y'all can see this. Start tag process. All right. And we don't need the name of, well, but that takes us to the path. And then I'm just going to put here tag argument list. Um, and I'm going to put this in double quotes. Okay. All right. So now that I've got my command, I'm going to copy that. The next step in the process is I'm actually going to verify that actually exists and I've already got this pulled up for you and look there there's that executable right there that is referencing that I found through the registry that's why it's really good to be able to interrogate the registry and find things okay so very much very similar to what we did last time I'm going to move this to the bottom of the page I've got this here and I'm going to run this command there it is right there and when I hit this you should see this version 6.0.13 disappear all right, and there it goes. All right, so we just eradicated 6.0.13 of uh, the .NET core from our computer. And in doing so, we need to also check these locations right here, right? Let's, let's see if this actually fixed the vulnerability. Because there can be many times that we can do stuff like this and it maybe doesn't. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna paste this folder. Ooh, look at that cannot find the folder so i'm going to go to shared thought right there and find that interesting let's just go to seek on program files do we have a dotnet folder we do not we don't need to have a dotnet folder okay so that that's promising all right so in theory what we have done is we've eliminated one, two, three, because these are different updates, right? These are for different versions that had a security vulnerability. All right, let's drag this over so y'all can see. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five vulnerabilities that we eliminated just by being able to kind of understand overall the impact, right? Now, if you think if I'm running this against a thousand machines or a hundred machines, that can have significant impact. And when we get our next can in tomorrow's episode, so don't forget to subscribe and come back because I'm essentially walking through remediating everything on TI Desktop 4 till we get to zero vulnerabilities. So that means I'm going to have to do some things that are creative with Zoom because once again, it's going to be a different thing. So I already have an idea of working with some Zoom vulnerabilities in the past, but then it looks like we got a HP a Xerox print driver. We got lots of stuff to do. So anyway, don't forget to come back, tune into the series. Uh, don't forget to drop a like on the video. And by the way, if you made it to this portion of the video, type 6.0.13. 6.0.13.
let's make sure that's right because that's the version of the vulnerability that we remediate. Yep, 6.0.13. That's the version of .NET Core that we remediated. So drop that in chat. Let me know. I'm going to shoot you all a link to my Discord, okay? A direct link and a direct message. So for those of you that dropped it on the previous video, I'm going to do that today. The rest of you get a, a request to my Discord. I want to start building the community to be able to talk more, get better feedback on videos and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.